Hello and welcome to the GP Vahan podcast. My name is Greg and I will be your host. We have a very special guest for this episode, Michael Gurjan. Michael is a director, actor, filmmaker, and a writer. He has won an Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Miniseries or Special. Michael has also won a Golden Globe. He has been in numerous films such as Chaplin, Forever Young, Leaving Las Vegas, just to name a few. Michael has also appeared in a number of television series, including Lie to Me, House, Alias Monk, CSI, Without a Trace, Chicago Hope, and so much more. In 2004, he worked with the iconic Kirk Douglas in the movie Illusion, which he wrote, acted, and directed. And now he's here with us to talk about his new indie movie called Amerigatsi. So without further ado, here's Michael Gurjan. Hey, Michael. Hello. Yeah. How are you, Greg? That's a long list, Michael. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's just one career. Ex- oh, what? I know. Well, I know about your... Uh, I've, got, I've got other things. Yeah, I know. No, you're yeah. also a novelist, I read. Uh, and you have a book out called What Lies Beyond the Stars. I mean, come on, man. Between directing, writing, acting, you're like a modern-day renaissance, man. So, uh, Well, none of that None of that compares to... Um... Uh, what you got to put into being a dad. <laughs> yes, I, I totally agree with you. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm 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 a busy guy running yeah. around doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. So you don't need much sleep, right? Sleep is overrated for an artist. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Sleep is important. I, I'm actually pretty good. I got good. Um, I remember actually being an actor young because a lot of times the, like the shooting hours would be crazy and mm-hmm. you'd have to wait. And, and uh, I got pretty good at taking cat naps. Okay. I, I'm pretty, that's one of my, my uh, superpowers is I can fall asleep <laughs> pretty fast. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, before we start talking about the Amirigatsi movie, I do want to talk about um, how you started in this business. I mean, you started young, as you mentioned, were you in uh, like high school theater or something or, yeah yeah um uh yeah i started through uh theater um my my uh, father was a uh, uh, mathematician and my mom was a nurse so i i I wasn't like you know a child actor with a stage mom or anything like that Mm. (laughs) uh i got into doing theater in junior high um uh some community theater stuff and then uh in high school uh i was a theater kid i did plays Mm. And then uh, from there, ended up at uh, UCLA, okay. uh, the theater department there. Uh, it's a little different now with technology, but back then, yeah. basically, you had to be either in New York or L.A. if you wanted yeah. to act. So yeah. I chose L.A. I'm from San Francisco. I was born in San Francisco and grew up, grew up in the Bay Area. So it's a little closer to my family to be in L.A. Okay. Well, you, yeah, you're lucky in that sense. You were around the area. And I think you got your first break uh, in a Disney movie called Newsies, yeah, right? Newsies, With Christian yeah. Bale and uh, Robert mm-hmm. Duvall. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, I actually, I made my first uh, sort of <laughs> movie on that set. We were, so I was hired as a dancer. For yeah. That. I got, yeah. I, I, for some reason, I <laughs> heard about the audition and I was like, yeah, I, I grew up in Oakland. I can, I can dance. So <laughs> I went and I ended up getting, you know, getting a, a job as a dancer, but they had hired us. Um, I think this is like the last time they did this where kind of like the old time studios where we were just on salary and uh, for, I don't know, something like seven, eight, nine months. Wow. Even if they didn't use us, we would show up on set. Wow, so we okay. were on the back lot of uh, Universal for four months, something like that. And um, a lot of the kids, you know, there's a lot of young young guys, newspaper guys. Mm. Um, somebody had a video camera, like, a, um, and this is, this is back in the day. So VHS <laughs> camera that you put a VHS in. Yep. And we were goofing around and I was like, let's make a movie. Let's make our own movie. <laughs> so <laughs> I directed a horror film called blood drips on newsy square oh i love it and <laughs> and um it was you know we shot it on the back lot of universal and um <laughs> the goofy you know silly movie but everybody's in it like christian bale's in it uh bill pullman we tried to get robert <laughs> duvall robert duvall wanted to be in it but he wasn't on set when we were shooting 
anyways it's uh you can find it on i think youtube and stuff okay like i was gonna say please tell me that's out there because i would love to Yo, see it's out there it's out there yeah, yeah. early beginnings uh, yeah. of a director yeah 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 that's oh that's <laughs> awesome uh well uh i also wanted to ask you about the the movie illusion as i mentioned mm -hmm. you wrote the screenplay directed and acted with kirk douglas i mean uh, the iconic Kirk Douglas. Uh, the first time I saw him, I remember when I was a kid with my dad, and it was the Disney movie Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, uh, yeah. That was the first time I remember watching Kirk Douglas, and you had a chance to work with him. So, how was yeah. that? How did that uh, come? It's a long story, <laughs> I'm uh, sure. Uh, it is a long, long story. Um, I'll try to give you the short, short version of it if I can. D during that period, I had another. Um, script i wanted to direct an independent film and i had another script i was trying to get made and i couldn't get it it fell through whatever and i found this uh play um l'illusion comique by um pierre cornet mm -hmm. that uh i realized the structure of the play how it was structured was perfect for me to make a movie on my own and mm -hmm. because what it was and this is what is kind of in the movie the general story is about a, um, a uh, director who's mm -hmm. on his deathbed who uh, had an illegitimate son and never knew whatever happened to this kid. And Angel character in the movie, it's a, he comes to him in a dream and basically says, hey, um, I'm going to take you somewhere to this uh, special place where I work where they have records of everyone's lives. And, and it's just like a theater. I'm going to show you your son's life. I, I picked out some reels and you can see him, you know, all of a sudden Kirk Douglas's bed is in the middle of a movie theater mm -hmm. and they put reels on and they show him the son's life. But every, the reels um, are very much like in the style of So the first reel, he's a teenager and it's kind of like a teen film. Yeah. And the second one, he's in his mid twenties and it's like a arty gritty and then the third one, he's in his 30s. And, it's, and so anyway, that's the general story. And, and, and uh, it's, you know, some cool things happen. And, but the reason I chose it is because I realized I can shoot the son's uh, story of like the teen film. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I have enough money to shoot that. I can use it then to raise money to do the second reel of the son's life. Okay. And then I can use that raise, raise money to the third one. And then once I have all that, I have like 75% of the movie done. Then I can go to like some big actor and mm -hmm. say, Hey, you know, normally it'd be hard for me to get anybody to pay attention, but I have 75% of the film here. Here's, here's <laughs> what I shot. And I can prove like it's good. I can show them what's good. And, and all I need you is for like, you know, a couple a week, week and a half, you get to be in bed the whole time. It's, it's really <laughs> easy. So that was my my plan, but it ended up working, and and yeah. um, somehow eventually we got it to. I had gone after a few different actors, and Kirk Douglas's agent, Kirk had had a stroke, mm -hmm. probably maybe seven eight years before we shot. Yeah, but his speech, so his speech was not great, but it was getting. He had worked on it a lot and gotten mm -hmm. stronger, so it was kind of the perfect role for him. Uh, he read the script. I went over to his house and met him. I remember he looked at my chin and he was like, eh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could be my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Okay. And yeah. uh, and uh, we rehearsed for like, he was great. I, I remember yeah. at that point I was, I had put all my money into making this film and I was sleeping on friends' couches and wow. I would literally take the bus into Beverly Hills to go to wow. his house to rehearse. Um. And then, uh, yeah, and then we shot, and he was phenomenal. He was uh, such. I, I I'm blessed to to have yeah. uh, gotten the chance to work with him, and yeah, and uh, he was actually quite a, a supporter of Armenians. Um, I mean, he was mm -hmm. a supporter of a lot of causes, but I remember him telling me a story of uh, in the I think mid or early '60s, one of the studios wanted to make a film about um, Ataturk about the mm. young Turks and yeah. asked him to play at a church and he refused. Wow. He said, no, wow. there's no way I'll do that. Wow. So. Never knew that story. Wow. Thank you for sharing. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the movie is just an amazing movie. Just 
alone, uh, the whole Akashic Records idea um, and the whole theosophy and all of that, it was it was pretty cool, you know, because you don't yeah, really yeah. see a lot of films like that about that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, you know, true. Yeah. True. So was that the, part um, of the script that you wrote? No, 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 no. Okay. The, the um the movie theater all of that was uh, i created the the play um that pierre cornet wrote and actually it was there was a um um tony kushner did mm -hmm. a version adaption of the same play um that came out in the 80s i think called illusion mm -hmm. um or the illusion and both plays um take place in a uh like in in medieval times and it's an old mm -hmm. man goes to a, a magician who lives in a cave uh -huh. And he creates illusion, like um, perform it, like it becomes plays. Mm -hmm. So the son's life is acted out as plays, basically, I see. that the father's watching. So the idea of putting it in a movie theater and using the concept of the Akashic Records, which, yes, comes from um, theosophy, um, popularized it in the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, uh, um, you know, it's from Madame Hindu Blavatsky and, and yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's taken yeah. from, I, I'm pretty sure the original, I, even the word Akashic Records yeah. comes from. Um, it's Sanskrit um, first guy. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. yeah, the exactly. idea. So yeah, the idea that every, there is a, a record of everything, mm -hmm. a record of um, all things that have happened. The past, present um, and future. Yep. Everything yeah. is there. So which, yeah. which uh, brings the idea of where's free will? if that really exists right that's so. uh, a good question <laughs> <laughs> well uh i think yeah well we don't want to get too deep too no quick, no but, no uh, that's, a, that's uh, that is the question about. that you must ask yes exactly but but i love i love how you put that in there and it's just a beautiful movie and it has won multiple awards too um yeah, so yeah. it's out there for people to see and check out uh, as I mentioned, uh, you directed a ton of movies, uh, but you also did a documentary with Dr. Wayne Dyer, which, uh, you know, goes into all that philosophy. And you can see some of that philosophy in your illusion movie. And um, from what I saw uh, from the trailer of Amirigatsi, it has some of that philosophy in there, too. So, yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. It, it sounds like you put a lot of that in your work and in your writing yeah well i would say um so directing and writing is a little different than uh acting acting it's a little easier to be involved in something and you know you go and get to have fun and then you leave and uh but the amount of time it takes to direct a film or mm -hmm. you know to write something um it's such an investment and mm -hmm. for me um it's always been important to uh, like I want to make the things that I want to see, um, that I would be interested in seeing that I, exactly. and, uh, so for me, I, I've always loved films that have some level of depth that are about something. It's not just entertainment, but yeah. there's, um, beyond the entertainment, there's something else that like inspires or makes me walk away and just feel different or think different or, um, so, I've always searched for and still search for stories that um, that have a deeper almost. I mean, Amerigazzi uh, recently, a, a friend I was talking to about it and he said, you know, it's very much a fable what it is. Um, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, things that have a kind of level of fable or mm -hmm. or, um, you know, myth kind of basis. Yes. Surrealism a little bit, yeah, magical surrealism. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, the tone, tonally and and the style can, you know, the things I've done are there's a lot of commonality, mm -hmm. but in terms of, I mean, I you know, I I, I would I I'd, I'd love to I'd make an action film or a mm -hmm. horror film or whatever, um, if that doesn't matter as much as like what's underneath the story. Mm -hmm. if, is yes. there something there? that's being transmitted, not just entertaining. Yes, you know? I totally get it. I mean, it's the idea of telling a myth within a myth makes that myth mm -hmm. real kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So I totally get it. Yeah. And I'm heavy into mythology myself being a fantasy artist. You know, I love all of that. So I totally mm -hmm. get where you're coming from. It just makes it more real. So let's talk about Amirigatsi. Very excited about this movie. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I'm in Boston, so I haven't had okay. a chance yet. And I'm waiting for it to come here, and eventually it yeah. will. 
Uh, yeah, they will. They will. Yes. For sure. And uh, so, how did that come about? Because I know you wrote the screenplay, and um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Oddly, the same uh, script that I was trying to get made that I couldn't get made that then turned into me going off and making illusion. I uh, again was trying to get made, <laughs> and <laughs> it, it it we couldn't get the funding. And so I was like, well, what can I do? What, what is there? And um, <clears throat> I had a story. Uh, it's actually, there's, so Amerigazzi is a, there's a lot of true things in it, but it's mm -hmm. not like based on someone's life or anything like that. Um, yeah. But one component was a story that a Ukrainian friend had told me um, about someone he knew who in Ukraine, who was in prison, mm -hmm. um, who could see, outside of their through their cell window they could see into an apartment building near mm -hmm. the prison and there was a man living there and the guy for 10 years would just watch this guy and knew everything about him and learned everything about this guy's life um and i've always it's just such a fascinating story yeah. so i was like i wonder what i can do with that and at the time um it was around 2000 18 and the um the revolution in in armenia was going on and mm -hmm. i was watching uh that and and it was very inspiring and like you know um and i don't know somehow from that i started to learn about repatriation um mm -hmm. and the different waves of uh, armenians repatriating back mm -hmm. to armenia and it you know there were started as early as after world war one there was um people that went in uh and re as all the way up into the, the 70s and 80s. Um, but there was a period right after World War II um, when Stalin had gone out to the diaspora mm -hmm. in Europe and in the United States and uh, yeah. Egypt and Lebanon and basically said, come back uh, to your homeland, uh, help rebuild. Yeah. And all this propaganda went out about how wonderful communism is and look at all this great stuff and many armenians went mm -hmm. and there was about 300 who went from the united states in in a uh, two different boats went over um before <laughs> people caught wind of how bad things were over there yeah um so that period um i was learning more about it and it kind of melded together with this other this story i had and and that was the foundation of of the script um I wrote it in 2018. By the end of 2018, I had kind of set it up enough that I went to uh, Armenia uh, at the end of the year to scout and to meet actors. Um, I had been to Armenia for the first time in 2006, um, okay. actually with Illusion. I went, uh, it was at the Golden Apricot Film Festival. Okay. So I was there briefly in 2006 and had a wonderful time. So I went back um, 2018 to kind of prep and start. And then by, it took a year to get the funding figured out and all that. Um, the Ministry of Culture um, helped fund the film. There mm. were some uh, in, uh, independent equity uh, investors and a few foundations that contributed. And uh, so the end of 2019, I flew out right before New Year's with my wife and my son to start prepping. And they then flew back in uh, because my wife is a professor at um, San Francisco State and my mm -hmm. son was in school. Yeah. So they came back and were meant to fly back out for spring break once we started shooting. We're meant, to, you know, we're going to start in March. Uh, and then the pandemic happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, um, and we had uh... the, the film, the film was, um 90 percent over 90 percent um the cast and crew were based in armenia yeah so wow. all okay. all people there i brought uh, my cinematographer was from the united states mm -hmm. um hovik kushkarian mm -hmm. who is uh, an actor from uh, money heist yes amazing actor <laughs> yeah i i had found him and he's a spanish um armenian actor so he lives yes. in madrid mm -hmm. so he had he was there um, we had some actors from Russia, two actors mm -hmm. from Russia in the film. And once the pandemic hit, we had shot, you know, maybe uh, about a week. We we're about 10 days into shooting. Mm 
And Spain, if you remember early on, was hit really bad. Yes. And yeah. so Hovick, we had only shot half of uh, his stuff. And he was like, my good man, I, I have to go home. I, I have my, my, my mother. I have to see her. I have, yeah. <laughs> he had an elderly <laughs> That's mother. That's pretty good. There, and I was like, oh, oh yeah. okay. Uh, uh, so he flew back and then yeah. uh, the Russians flew back. And, and uh, there was a couple days where I could have flown back to the United States. Hmm. Uh, but my wife kind of encouraged me to stay. She was like, mm, yeah, you, you need to finish this film. And we yeah. don't know. And then the travel ban kicked in and I was stuck there. Oh, you wow. Know, I, I couldn't fly home yeah, and they yeah. couldn't fly over. So for two months, I was locked up in an apartment in Yerevan with uh, uh, my uh, cinematographer and the first day C also was from the United States. We had okay. shared an apartment and we were in lockdown. Um, and you couldn't and, do anything, work on the movie, nothing. Wow. Well, that must have been frustrating. Is, yeah. 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 Um, there. So. <laughs> We finished the film, so it, this has a happy ending. Okay, um, I, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> You're killing me, Michael. I'm, I'm like, know, I'm, I'm in suspense here. Yeah, no. and, was, and then, yeah, yeah. no. Um, we were hit by obstacle after obstacle, yeah. and and we just did our best to kind of go, okay, how? where's the opportunity here? Where's the part of this that kind of... And I'll have to say, sitting where I am now, the film is a hundred times better because of the pandemic, because of the things that, you know, there were sets that weren't quite finished that mm. while we were in lockdown, the production guys would go and sneak up and start and work on, <laughs> you know, they weren't supposed to be out, but they would work yeah. on them in the middle of it. The, um, there were things where there were shots that I was able to look at the footage over those two months and be like, you know what? we never got a wide shot of the, wow. if we had a wide shot of this, it would be so much better. There were casting things where one actor was meant to play one role. And uh, because I couldn't get, there was a Russian actor that I really wanted to play this lead Russian guy mm -hmm. and he wasn't available. And so I had cast another actor who uh, was Armenian and would have been, he would have been great, but mm -hmm. he was much better for a different role. Um, yeah. And luckily, we didn't shoot any of that. So by the time we were able to shoot, I was able to cast the guy I really wanted. Wow. He was available suddenly. And this guy can play the role I wanted him to. Wow. So things like that. Eventually, over uh, we, it took five months, six months. Uh, Mid-July, we finally wrapped. Um, wow. Okay. Shooting. Um, and then uh, I finally flew back. I, I hadn't seen my... My, I had a, have a son who's at the time was five, you know, six months of, of oh, not wow. being a, yeah. a, your, your kid. It's yeah. Really tough. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had FaceTime and stuff, but even that you know, was kind of almost made it worse. Um, yeah. Especially when you don't know if, you know, there was points where it's like, am I ever going to see the <laughs> kid again? You know, yeah. is the world ever going to open up? <laughs> like, ah. Anyways. So, um, yeah. Um, you went through, you did it. Uh, mm -hmm. It worked out for the better, uh, it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, maybe like everybody else, we just needed that reset button. Yeah, COVID was horrible, but it also gave us a chance to kind of reset and uh, do things for the better, hopefully. Uh, yeah. It sounds yeah. like, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, so the title, Amerigatsi, which means uh, the American and Armenian. Who came up with yeah. that? Was that your idea? Uh, no, you know what? Actually... The uh, when I wrote the script, it had a different title. It was called "The New Armenian," um, oh. kind of inspired by uh, Soroyan's quote about yeah. uh, mm -hmm. building a new Armenia. Yeah. Um, and uh, Serge Tankian is a producer of the film, mm -hmm. and he, I remember he read this. I didn't know him before the film, and he, so through a mutual friend, he had read the script and was like, "Oh, I want to help. I want to do whatever I can to help. This is such a good film." Yeah. And he said, "But you know." I don't think, I think you got to change the title. And a bunch of people said the same thing. Yeah, I don't know if that title's right. I had friends in Armenia who were like, you know, uh, the new Armenian here, that's kind of a way of saying like nouveau riche. It's not, mm. it doesn't quite mean what you think. So the whole time we were shooting, we were thinking we were like, okay, what's the title? What's the title? And everybody <laughs> was pitching ideas and like this and that. We had a million different 
possible titles. It really wasn't until like we we're close to finishing shooting the last few days of shooting. And um, I think it was our first AC, Rodine. We were after the shoot drinking beers and he was like, hey, you know, every, all, all the actors, all the characters call you Amerigazzi all the time. I mean, what about that? What about that? And we were like, oh, wow, mm, that's pretty good. <laughs> Wow, and of course, then there were people, you know, concerns of like, oh well, an Armenian word, will it work? Non-Armenians, when they see, it works great. Like, yeah, it does. You you can tell, you know, if you don't speak Armenian, you know nothing yeah. about it. You know, it's something about an American, yeah. you know, in a foreign place because it's yes. America. See, you know, what is this? So yeah. it works. It works. It, it works on multiple levels. Honestly, I mean, when I first saw it, I'm like, that is awesome. I'm really got I never, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But that's that's great. Uh, the movie went through. You did it because uh, I mean, making an indie movie is never easy. You know, with the funding, the amount of yeah. people that work on it, the amount of work that goes into it, it's just. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's an accomplishment, man. So, you know, I Thank applaud you. you for making it happen, especially through the pandemic and everything else. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, we're all looking forward to seeing it once it comes out uh, closer to Boston. I know yeah, you're we'll, in New York. We'll get up there. The festival. Yeah, we were just yeah, in New York. So, yeah, and, yeah. We, and we won. We won the New York. Yes. We we've, we've basically, every festival we've gone to, we've yes. won either Best Narrative Film or mm -hmm. Audience Award or both. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, and I you know, I'm, I, I try, I'm, I tried to be a humble filmmaker. Uh, my son, of course, he's like, Oh, dad, with your big award. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, I, you know, we've, we've had, the, we opened, uh, the film, uh, the premiere was in at the Golden Apricot Festival in Armenia, yes. which was mm -hmm. great. It was at yeah. the opera house there, 1500 people. It was a bit, you know, standing ovation and it yeah. went very well but that's kind of preaching to the choir yeah in a way. but you know we won uh woodstock you know maybe there's a handful of armenians that came out to see it but yeah. mostly non-armenians yeah. we won the audience award at uh hamburg where the mm -hmm. audiences were german you know like a few armenians not not a ton of armenians in germany but there were some yeah. pretty much just germans watching and it worked it's yeah and this was so Part of the reasoning behind wanting to make this film and this particular story for me was, um, you know, there have been a lot of films that uh, deal with the genocide, which is yeah. incredibly important. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to make something that would share who we are and our culture to non-Armenians yes. to be easier. Like, I don't know if this was you, but, you know, the promise, trying to drag your <laughs> your mm -hmm. uh a non-armenian friend to go see it was yeah too yeah tough yeah like yes it's, it's to let, let me go traumatize you for yes hour exactly hour, i know like yeah. it's 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 important but at the yeah. same time it's very uh it's a tough um yeah. it's it's difficult so yes at the same time i didn't want to make my big fat armenian wedding i didn't want to make yeah. something that was just not that it's you know it's a good film but yes i didn't want to make just something fluffy um, and light. Um, but I did want to make something that non Armenians would see and would enjoy watch. Yes. It would yeah. be, uh, enjoyable to watch and like, Hey, that was great. So this particular story and, and the, the tone of the film, that's the other thing is, is that, um, I don't think you really get it so much from the current trailer that we have, but it, there's a lot of comedy in the film. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though it's about a very rough, situation it's a very there's it's a very um uh, remember uh life is beautiful yes yeah uh, mm -hmm. roberto bonini yes of course it's a yeah. very similar tone yeah. to that yeah it's okay a difficult situation and subject matter but the way yeah. it's treated is with a levity and and playfulness so that it never gets too like unbearable yeah so anyways I mean, it's it sounds like it it kind of transcends uh, culture too. It's more of a human story, which connects Absolute, everybody. Absolutely, you know, and that's what it absolutely. is. You don't have to be an Armenian; you can be any culture and go see this and connect with the movie because, again, it's a human story. Uh, yes, and, and which just happens to have some Armenian language, sure, and music. just happens to have music that's <laughs> Armenian, and just happens to have some. You see, learn little bits of culture here and yes. there. You yeah. see people eating Armenian. Food, you yes. 
so that was the idea is, is that, you know, um, this, I, the, the story, the root story is really about voyeurism. Yes. Um, about this guy longing to be, to see this life over there and is longing for the freedom to live that life and, and see, well, what is that? That yeah. is Armenia and Armenian yes. culture. And that's what this yeah. whole idea of a repatriate going back, come showing up and finding not Armenia, but the Soviet Union. And in the film, you know, as many for many people right away was arrested and thrown yeah. in prison. Most people were sent to Siberia. And this yes. story, he's not sent, sent to Siberia, but is, you know, shows up and finds nothing of what he was looking for yes. in terms yeah. of Armenia and or what, you know, but then through this, the circumstances, this view through his cell window he sees an apartment where behind, you know, in the privacy of the apartment, he learns everything I want. I show everything I want to show the world yeah. about Armenia in that way. So. It, it almost sounds like uh, the illusion kind of a concept <laughs> just sitting there. And, you know, it's just, which I that. love, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah. You know, it's again, you're, you're kind of like, a, yeah. yeah, or out of body experience in a way, too. And you're just sitting there and watching this play out and longing to be there. And uh, mm -hmm. it's just, it's beautiful. I mean, again, like I said, from what I saw from the trailer, the music is fantastic. Um, yeah. The cinematography, yeah. uh, the colors, it's just, it's, it's, I'm very excited to see it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Um, so any, before we go, I know you got to get yeah. going. You've been busy for the past two weeks running around. And, and like yeah. I said, you were at festivals. You were at the Pomegranate Festival too, which has yeah. which won multiple awards there. And you just yeah. came back. Um, so uh, what I wanted to ask was any funny anecdotes you can tell us from oh my God. Shoot, you know, <laughs> any, <laughs> as, as, as long as you want to go, hours. as many as you want to <laughs> tell. No, it's, oh, I love that. Well. Yeah. It's just, uh, pull the I'll veil back you, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, um, well, one, that, the first one that comes to mind is, uh, so to get Hovick left, went back to Spain and, um, to get him back into the country, it took months um, because everything was in lockdown. There were no planes mm. and we were, you know, maybe we could get a private jet and this and that. like, we were trying to figure out how to get him back in the country. Yeah. Um, and then there was the whole thing of like, once he got, he got in the country, he would have to quarantine for, you know, they wanted like two weeks of quarantine before he could be like crazy. And we, cause we wouldn't be able to afford to just like have him sit for two weeks. And yes. So eventually there was like, you know, in Armenia, everything is done in different ways. Like my producer <laughs> Armand, you know, ran off and like smoked a cigar with some important person and came back and was like, <laughs> okay, we can get him back in the country. So, but the deal was, is he still had to quarantine for like a week. Yeah. And um, the way they checked would be, they would, they had his uh, he, cell phone and they said, okay, well, we're going to call you on FaceTime and you have to, you know, we'll see that you're in your apartment. Yeah. Okay. So we were like, all right. <laughs> well, all of the stuff, he plays um, the guy who's in the apartment. Yes. Um, Tigran. He plays yeah. the character, yeah, yeah. Tigran, who is, yeah. is the man who's living in this apartment. Yeah. Well, the apartment w was a set. And so we had a deal with the crew. So when he got into town, right away, we started shooting. And he said, okay, if they call, everyone hide. And then Dick Ron will, just, or Hovick will answer and be like, yeah, yeah, look, yeah, I'm in my apartment. You see? Yeah, yeah, my apartment. And just don't point towards where they can see, like, out the window to see it's the soundstage. Just point towards the walls. And, yeah. Now, being, being Armenia, of course, Nobody ever called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it it's never just... happened. Yeah, but that was our plan. It was our plan. And almost you wanted people to call just so you can pull that, you know, I know, I know that I know. illusion <laughs> off. You know, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, I mean, you know, we talked a lot about what you've done, the many hats that you wear, directing, acting. How do you balance all of that, man? I mean, that's that's a lot. How do you how do you balance that? Um, no pressure, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. The key for me is, um, I know this is going to sound a little silly. Um, I'm nice. Mm. 
and and I I am lucky enough to have a lot of people around me who I can rely on. Um, so in terms of just in terms of shooting, you know, my cinematographer, the first AD, the producers, um, I feel like the more I can inspire other people to give their best, mm-hmm. um, you that makes the film better. Mm-hmm. Um, I know directors who are tyrants and like, rah, rah, and yeah, you can make a good movie that way, but nobody, you know, everybody is not so happy about it. And yeah. for me, by, you know, by being kind to other people and, mm-hmm. and trying to inspire other people when you're working, then I can rely on them. Like, so it's yeah. not for me, I'm, uh, it's not just me. Uh, I'm wearing a lot of hats, but I'm yeah. also sharing those hats with, the people I'm working with. Yeah. So I think that that you know it's not the only approach, but that's my approach. Is is um, by yeah. trying to be a good good person, you can accomplish a lot because yes. people want to work with you and yeah. people want to help. So. Well, you surround yourself with like-minded people, um, yeah. and you have a lot of uh, why not people around you rather than why people. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's Although, the motto I go by. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you another small anecdote, which is please we, share. I, I quickly came to realize that um, uh, the a lot of the more kind of Soviet era Armenians working on the film. Yeah. Um, whenever, like, I okay, we're prepping and like building a set, and I'm like, oh gosh, what if we just, you know, these window panes are really wide. And it's going to mean a lot if they were thinner. So the I realized <laughs> anytime you ask for anything, the immediate answer is no. No, no, no. Not possible. <laughs> well, sh- 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 not possible. Nope. But then I realized that it's a whole process. And yeah. my first AD, Vartan, and Arman Nishani and our producer, I realized, oh, I just have to kind of look to them and be like, oh, okay. Walk away. They would talk, yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, okay, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show you that they're making the impossible possible. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I <exactly>. love that. <laughs> you know? it's, that's great, Michael. Well, thank you. Uh, well, before we say goodbye, uh, I know this might be a little early to ask, but uh, what's next for you? You know, do you have any upcoming projects that you can share with us? And you know, uh, um, any books I, or <laughs> yeah oh god I, i've got a lot of half-baked things around um i i am i'm still in that middle ground of i'm not quite sure i haven't yeah. i haven't had i you know i know i i know i need to you know get a job and, and make some money <laughs> so um i might be yeah i'm not sure what i'm doing just yeah. yet but um i'm sort of hunting for that next project and and i would I, honestly i would love to um, make more films in armenia I, yeah I, it was it was fantastic i would encourage other armenians uh, mm-hmm. other artists to do the same it's uh, you know it's one of these things of i think all armenians kind of feel you know we want to help our culture and help our our homeland and yes. And there are many different ways to do that. For yes. me, the most powerful way is by um, creating, yeah. creating more stuff, not just reveling in what we have done yeah. and definitely not just by, you know, uh, uh, focusing on the traumas of the mm-hmm. past, but by making new stuff and working and, you know, so much good came out of not making a movie about Armenia in like Arizona, making a movie there with yeah. people there, bringing Armenians from the diaspora to work with Armenia's yeah. uh, highest it, it, That's, that's, it's, it was, it was very, um, I feel very, uh, if anything, I'm, I'm most proud of that aspect yes. of the film. Yeah. And uh I think I would encourage other artists and Armenian artists to do the same or find ways to do the same. Yes, I totally get you. I am so glad you said that Uh, just because, you know, again, we've mentioned the genocide. Um, It's very important, but every film or everything we do connects to the genocide. Um, And as an artist, I've been trying to step away from that. Uh, For example, Mm -hmm. what I do is I do a lot of Armenian mythology and I try to bring Mm -hmm. all of that back. And just to show Mm -hmm. the world that, 
Armenians have an ancient culture that goes back thousands of years. Yeah. And all yeah. these stories and legends, if nobody talks about, then they're going to mm -hmm. get lost because all we mention is the genocide, which again is key, but there's other things that we can give and show the world. Yeah. And, and to glad. be honest, to be honest, um, even though what I made was really not about the genocide, it's still a part of the, the film. Yes. It's, it's still represented in the it, it's hard not to have but it's not the point it's not the focus it's not yes. the point yeah. um so that's the other thing is is that it it's not so much ignoring like oh we're not going to pay attention yes. no it's a part of everything but of it, it doesn't need to be the focus there's so much yeah. more that we have to share yes um yeah. and uh yeah so yeah. i agree with and i'm glad yeah. you're doing what you're doing yeah, thank you. Well, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing, and it's amazing. And again, this the, the film just looks amazing, and can't wait to see it. And seriously, thank you. Thank so you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your passion with us. It was truly a pleasure thank talking you. with you, Michael. Seriously, thank yeah. you so much. You too. Yeah, and I will. Uh, I'll stay in touch about. Uh, I, hopefully, I know we'll have screenings in Boston. Yes. Um, and uh, as soon as I I, yeah. I know, I'll let you know. Sure. I mean, there's uh, social media. Uh, Amerigazzi is yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yep. So people yep. can go and watch those uh, and just, just like and subscribe uh, to those social media. And that way, you know, when it's coming to your neighborhood yeah. and go support it, yeah. please. You know, Armenian, yeah. non-Armenian. It's again, it's a human story and it's an indie film. Uh, everybody should support indie film. You know, it's, it's very important. And thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Thank you all for listening. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, like and share the channel. And if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, please hit that follow button. It really helps this program to reach more people. I'm also including links for the Amirigazi trailer as well as other related sites for the film. Please go check it out. So until next time, I am GP Vahan. Be well. Be well.